Good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning, the 22nd of February, and we're going to come this morning with our Lent readings and read John chapter 2, the whole chapter. It's not that long. So let's read it together. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivals, so Jesus' mother's mother told him, they have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby, there were six, six stone jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it came from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then, when everyone has had lots to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brother and his disciples. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he watched merchants selling cattle, sheep and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased him out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattering the money changers' coins over the floor and overturned their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered his prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. But the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do us, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What? they exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. You can rebuild it in three days. But when Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Because of this miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebrations, many began to trust in him. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. Amen. That's it entire gospel the chapter of john chapter two it's interesting at the start a couple of things that jesus says um the first quote we have from jesus when she talks to his mom is dear woman that's not our problem it's not my problem but our problem it shows that jesus is with god at that stage you know he it's not just jesus on his own but god is with him the holy spirit is with him it's our problem um, not mine. Um, and also he says, my time has not yet come. So Jesus had this sense that it wasn't what he was meant to do, but yet he went on ahead and helped the people anyway. He helped out at that wedding. And in doing so, performed his first miracle. Didn't matter what was going on around him, Jesus um, helped people. It didn't matter that people would reject him, as he knew, right at the very end of that chapter, it says he, no one needed to tell him about human nature for he knew what was in each person's heart. Even though Jesus knew human nature was to turn its back on him, he still reached out and he still helped them whenever he could. But it's also interesting when it comes to the temple. And maybe that's something for us to think about today. He drives out the people who are selling the sacrifices because they're actually in the temple. He drives out the people who are exchanging the money for temple money, again, because they are in the temple. Uh, it's that line, he says, stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. The temple had become contaminated as such. The temple 
was no longer pure. You've got to remember what the temple was built for. It was built to house part of the presence of God. That same presence that was with the people as in the journey through the wilderness. Do you remember how it talks about the, the cloud comes down over the tabernacle over the tabernacle and dwells in the inner part? And then you have the visible column above the tabernacle whenever that rose and moved and how the people were to move and follow it and how when it settled on the tabernacle they stayed put. Well, that presence was also in the temple. So part of God's presence was there. So that's what made it holy. And they were, they were instructed to keep it clean or uh, to have respect. Nowadays we don't have a temple. We don't need a temple because of what Jesus has done, because of the cross. But we are now the temple because the Holy Spirit, part of God, dwells in us. So we are told that we should do everything that we can to keep ourselves holy and pure. That means getting rid of the things that hinder us, getting rid of the things that hold us back, the things that contaminate us. Things that are not necessarily sin in themselves, but things that can get in the way. That's what we were talking about on Sunday, um, as we started to think about worship in the wilderness, about how we focus upon God. And, and this journey through Lent is about us focusing again upon God and about what he's done for us. So just, just as Jesus created out the temple, let us... Over Lent, try to clear out our minds, clear out our thinking, clear out some time to be able to worship God, to be able to come close to him and know that he is with us. So let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you again for another wonderful and glorious day. Father, we start to see sunshine again. It starts to give us a hope um, after all the rain and the misery. And we start to think about maybe things starting to to ease and get better and come to an end. Lord, the greatest hope that we can have of all times is the hope in you through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Thank you for all that you've done for us through him. Lord, help us as we each day draw close to you. Help us to be able to declutter our lives, to, to remove the things that get in between us and you and just be able to spend that precious time with you, to know you close, and to know you're leading and you're guiding. So Lord, thank you, now and always, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks folks for joining in this morning. Uh, great to see the, the, the nails bouncing up online. Sorry I'm not quick enough or able to, to, to type back, but it's lovely to see that. Uh, just trust that this morning that you would know God's peace and God's blessing. I mean, the sun is shining here in, in Newton Hours at the minute. It's lovely and it's lovely to see. But still, please stay safe today. Look after yourselves. And may you know God's peace and blessing. But I'll see you again tomorrow morning at half nine. Till then, take care. God bless. Bye.